What's up guys? It's Dope Gamer here with a short tech review. The Oculus Quest 2, released October 13th, 2020, is a formidable opponent against its counterparts, the HTC Vive series, Valve Index, and even its other Oculus partner, the Rift, coming in at just $399 for the 250GB version and a low $299 for the 64GB version. Although I think they could have made that 128GB, but that's just my opinion. With a resolution of 1832 by 1920 per eye and a refresh rate of up to 90 hertz, this guarantees an overall immersive experience over some earlier versions of the VR. This device is standalone, meaning you can directly load games and apps into the device and play them with a wire-free experience. But this is not where the fun is in my personal opinion. With this being such a capable device, it can be used to play your Steam VR games. And there are two ways you can do this. First is to purchase Oculus's link cable and tether it to your computer. At 79 US dollars, this will give you 16 feet of space and the option to keep your device charging as you play. The second option is a bit more complex, but the end results yield a better experience in my opinion. There is an app you can purchase called Virtual Desktop for only $20 US and there are a few other steps such as downloading a few apps uh, like SideQuest and get the virtual desktop extension and virtual desktop streamer to connect with your PC. The caveat here is that you have to have a super fast 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection and decent internet speeds. With my gig speed internet connection and my gateway device being so close in proximity, this wasn't an issue for me. The other drawback is that on the wireless connection to the PC, you get about two hours of playtime. But if you're playing an intense game like Half-Life Alex, then two hours will probably be exhausting anyway, but your mileage may vary. So the first option is easier, but more expensive using the cable, but can be cumbersome with all those cords in the way. And the second option is a bit more complex and requires more steps to set up and limits playtime. But since I'm a bit of a computer nerd and like to save my ducats, the second option is fine with me. And if you guys are wondering why the aspect ratio is a little funky here and the resolution is a little low, that's because I was streaming directly to Facebook from the device, which is a feature here that you can do. So it only records in one eye when you do this. That's why that aspect ratio is how it is. And of course, it's going to lower the resolution because you can't stream in the full resolution over a Wi-Fi connection and play your game. But I guarantee you guys the experience, if you experience it for yourself, is 10 times better. They do offer a comfort strap headset called the Elite Strap and extended life battery at an additional cost of $129 US. I may consider this in the future. The overall experience will take some time getting used to initially. Getting used to the original head strap and the fact that the headset needs to be pressed against your eyes tightly for ultimate clarity will probably be jarring at first. You can move the lenses nearer or apart depending on how your eyes are. There is an additional piece for users who wear glasses, but I was able to fit my headset over my glasses without it just fine. The gaming experience was decent. The little bit I did get to play of Half-Life Alex was a bit refreshing, although I still need to get used to the controls. You do have to remember that the game was engineered for Valve's Index, but after some playing around, I'm sure you'll be able to master it on this device just fine. The multimedia experience was key for me. You can connect multiple headsets and have watch parties with your friends, although I have not tried this. But with COVID and how things are today, I can see this being a replacement for people wanting to go to movie theaters and things like this with their friends. The part for me was changing the environment in the virtual desktop app to dark theater mode and watching episodes of The Mandalorian. I can only compare it to an IMAX experience with a bit of peripheral blurring, but not enough to turn me off. The controls are intuitive, giving you a left and right Joy-Con-like device. You can also pair a Bluetooth controller, or there's a feature where you can use your hands but this needs a bit of work in my opinion. It, it kind of reminds me of what Microsoft tried to do with the Kinect. Uh, you can tap on the right side of the device and access the camera to basically see outside of the device if you need to take a quick break or grab a drink really quickly. The cool part about it for me is after you set your border with your control, if you exit the border, 
a grid appears and it's like you're stepping back into reality or the real world. And once you step back inside of the grid, you're back into a virtual world. We're truly in the future if you ask me with this one. All in all, I would say get this device. It's worth picking up this holiday season if you want to get into VR. Uh, and it'll at least give you something to do while you're waiting on no stock of PS5 and video cards to be replenished. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. Please don't forget to subscribe. If you like the video, click the bell and get notified when more posts like this become available. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.